Hey everybody, this is Chris with Overclockers Club. As part of the Hydro Series from Corsair, we have the H100i Pro. It's an RGB all-in-one cooler, so let's get out of the box and see what it looks like. So let's scout around the box for some useful information. Right on the front of the box, right there, you can see it is Corsair Link compatible. Two 120 millimeter fans, they are the ML Series fans five-year guarantee, and it says it's the H100i Pro RGB. So if you're expecting to have RGB fans, that is not the case. Only the pump head is RGB. So if you're looking for a system with RGB fans from Corsair, you'd have to go with the H100i RGB Platinum. The same thing over here, H100i RGB Platinum SE. It is all in white. So you do have the ability to get everything with RGB. Just this one is only the pump head. All right, so looking at the other information here, you have the customizable RGB backlit pump head, dual radiators with two 120 millimeter ML series PWM fans, Corsair Link customization and control, and then zero RPM profile, which allows the fans to basically stop, which makes them ultra quiet when the temperatures are low enough and you don't really need the fans running. Now for anyone wondering what the compatibility is here, here's the list for Intel and AMD to show you what is covered. So you've got all your latest sockets all the way up through AM4 and all the way up through 2066 and then your 2011-3. So your latest current Intel sockets and AMD and then it sort of gives you a list of processors that it's recommended to be used with. And looking inside the box is the warranty and uh, the user guide there, installation manual. It's always good to sort of go through this, even if you are experienced uh, with installations of liquid cooling systems, it's still not a bad idea to sort of run through this and make sure you're familiar with all of the components and the installation steps. So that's my public service announcement there. Looks like a couple of fans. Mounting brackets and hardware. There's the pump, and uh, everything's in plastic, so you can get everything out of the protective covering there. All right, I got all the goodies out of the box. Let's sort of roll through them real quick. The first thing that caught my attention was this bracket here. It's quite shiny. It's a metal bracket, and as dark as that plating is, I would almost guess that's a nickel finish on there. Regardless, if you guess this is for an AMD installation, you would be correct. Next is this little cable here that attaches to the motherboard and the pump head there. This is so that you can control pump head functionality with the Corsair Link software. So one end goes into the pump, the other end goes onto your motherboard USB header. Fasteners, this is your hardware bag for uh, attaching the pump to the motherboard. This one here actually is nicely labeled cooler fan only. Usually these things are all thrown together in one bag and up to you to sort them out, but they actually labeled that. Good idea. There's the base plate or the bracket that goes under the motherboard. We've got two ML120 fans, gray plastic blades, sort of a matte finish, and a nice Corsair logo on the center sticker. These are four pin PWM fans. PWM stands for pulse width modulation. You control fan speed by varying a pulse uh, in frequency and width rather than varying voltage so you get a more accurate uh, way of controlling it. But these are 12 volt DC fans and they draw 0.219 amps. If anyone is interested in that, these have very nice robust frames to them. Looking at the radiator, now my very first cooler that I purchased many years ago was an H100 and I can tell you they have changed a lot since the original inception. So there's a three pin connector there for the pump and it has a single wire so that is most likely for monitoring RPMs typically. There's a SATA power connector and then we have two other connectors there that are for controlling your fans. The radiator itself has a very nice finish to it. A nice shiny chrome-like Corsair logo emblazoned on the side. That is really nice. They didn't used to do that. 
years ago. We were much more plain. And the lines here have a very heavy braiding to them and very robust connections. Looks like Corsair has made some changes over the years. And the same thing down here on the pump body. They've got some very robust termination points. So I got into the BIOS and played around with it for a little bit and uh, made some adjustments and checked the performance and I think I found a sweet spot for just good daily usage where I'm able to uh, run an overclock here slightly with 4 gigahertz and I'm holding the CPU temperature right now at around 85C the voltage is around 1.26, 1.28, I've seen it jump around fan is running around 3000 RPMs and I'm using Prime 95 to put the load on the CPU and this is just to sort of see how this little included Wraith CPU cooler uh, performs kind of gives me a line in the sand uh, and I'll run the same test with the same settings on the H100i just to sort of see what the difference is and for testing we are using the all-new MSI MPG X570 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi motherboard. It's an AMD motherboard using the new X570 chipset and we're using the new Ryzen 7 3800X CPU to test this Corsair H100i Pro RGB cooler. And again our numbers there were hovering right around 70, 71C. It kind of bounces around a little bit. But this is just a light overclock just to simply compare the stock cooler to this uh, all-in-one system from Corsair. So I went ahead and bumped the overclock up a little higher. 4.2 gigahertz, about 1.3 volts. And I'm around 82, 83. I've seen it hit 84 a couple times. It bounces around a little bit. The goal here was stability. I could spend a lot of time uh, and a lot of blue screens getting uh, a higher overclock. But the, again, the point being, you know, at these settings, I would have buried that uh, stock cooler there. And if you're comparing it to the stock cooler, then uh, once you hit 100C, your testing is pretty much done in that regard. So with these settings, again, uh, this cooler is fine. Now, the performance and the capacity of the cooler can be controlled by the manufacturer. But things that the manufacturer cannot control, the variables that affect performance are what case you're using, what fans you're using, where you place the fans, what fan speed you run them at, uh, the temperature of the room, the type of environment you live in, whether you're using a big monster graphics card like that and overclocked and dumping a lot of heat into the case. Those are all things that the cooler manufacturer, of course, can't control. But this H100i Pro seems to do a pretty good job of handling a mild to a sort of middle of the road overclock. Now, again, the RGB part is just the center of the pump, pump body there. The fans on this one are not RGB. If you do want to go with something like that on Amazon, you can get the uh, H100i RGB Platinum. It looks like it's around $129. It's actually a little cheaper currently than the uh, H100i Pro by a couple of dollars if you want a little more RGB. If you don't, then the H100i Pro is fine. As with all of the Corsair products that I've reviewed, and owned over the years, the H100i Pro displays the typical Corsair quality and the standard Corsair performance. I will give this the Overclockers Club Gold Award. And don't forget, it integrates quite well with the IQ software. I believe that's what the Corsair Link has sort of morphed into. This is Chris with Overclockers Club. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.